What is up, Pit fans? Thank you so much for tuning in to Inside the Panthers on YouTube. My name is Stephen Thompson, coming at you with an emergency recording of the Inside Pit Practice Report. And if anything Pit Athletics related could qualify as an emergency, this would be it. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the news this morning. If you haven't, uh, defensive line coach Charlie Partridge, who has spent 12 years with the Panthers over two different uh, stints, announced that he is leaving uh, the program. He will take the same job, the defensive line coach job, with the Indianapolis Colts. It is his first NFL job, and it is a crushing blow for the Pitt Panthers. Um, if you've watched this team, since Pat Narduzzi has been there, uh, and since Charlie Partridge has been there in particular, uh, defensive line has been one of, if not the best unit on the team, head and shoulders above pretty much every other position group uh, on the roster since Partridge arrived. Um, we'll get into some of the numbers uh, a little bit later, but this is the fifth assistant coach that Pitt is replacing, the first on the defensive side of the ball, um, and the first one that is leaving of their own volition. Um, all of the offensive coaching staff was turned over, excuse me, except for wide receiver coach Tyquan Underwood, um, uh, and Charlie Partridge is the first to depart from Pitt uh, because he wanted to, because he got a better opportunity. Um, you know, it is uh, – you know, it was a really crushing blow, and I think you can tell that first and foremost uh, from what Pat Narduzzi had to say uh, in his statement that he released uh, following, uh, you know, following the news breaking that that Partridge had uh, decided to leave. I'll read his statement uh, to you right here, right now. Uh, quote: As a coach and a mentor, Charlie Partridge has been vital to our program's rise over the past seven years. When I hired him back in 2017, I had high aspirations for the type of impact he would make for us. True to form, Charlie surpassed even those expectations. His influence on our players on and off the field is well known. Speaking personally, Charlie has been a tremendous confidant, advisor, and friend, and I'll always be grateful for that. The National Football League is getting a great coach and an even greater man. On behalf of our entire program, I wish him and his family only the very best. Uh, that is a long-winded statement for a guy in Pat Narduzzi who doesn't really say much when coaches leave, when, when guys leave period. Um, but you can tell that there was a special relationship between Narduzzi and Partridge and just a respe special relationship uh, between Partridge and this program, which he gave so much to over such a long time. And uh, Partridge had some words himself saying, quote, my heart is heavy and full of gratitude for Pitt and Pittsburgh. I'm honored to have the opportunity to be a D-line coach in the NFL. It's time, and I'm excited to go coach football. Hashtag hail to Pitt, H2P, hail to Pitt. So, you know, two guys uh, who I would say tend not to let their emotions run uh, very high or make them very public uh, are, are coming out and um, saying very nice things about each other, just showing how much of a connection there was there. Um you, you, this was different from you know Frank Signetti having to move on, or even Tim Salem and Andre Powell having to move on. Um, this is a guy who was foundational to the success that this program had, um, and the Panthers are losing a lot. I mean, we'll talk about what they're losing specifically. I mean, not only their top assistant coach and associate head coach, a guy that uh, you know had been picked at and prodded at by not just NFL jobs, but but other college coaching jobs for a while now, um, and he is an ace recruiter as well. Um, so Pitt not only loses, uh, pretty much undoubtedly their best recruiting, uh, their best position coach, excuse me, but an ace recruiter, especially in Florida, where Partridge is from, uh, where he has a ton of connections and where he's helped bring some really successful Panthers, um, from the Sunshine State up to up to Pittsburgh, um, you know, and, and just on the in terms of the recruiting, I mean, he was one of the best recruiters on the team. Um, he not only found underrated guys, uh, but he signed some some great, some uh, top-level talent as well. Uh, seven of Pitt's last 10 four-star signees played defensive line. Um, he Pitt has recruited 15 four-star recruits overall since Charlie Partridge uh, was uh, came back to Pittsburgh in 2017, and eight of those 15 four-star talents uh, played on the defensive line. Um those stats are from Noah Hiles of the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Credit to him. Um, and then on the field, he was turning, you know, not just those four star talents, but those three star talents, those two star talents, like Rashad Weaver and Patrick Jones, into stars and into really productive units. Um, in four of the last five seasons, Pitt is ranked in the top three nationally in sacks. Um, they've had 30 or more sacks as a team in each of the last six seasons. Um, 
you know, they went on a four year stretch from 2019 to 2022 where they had at least 45 sacks uh, in each season. Um, this defense is all about pressure. And, and when you watch them play, uh, the defensive line is one of the biggest reasons that pit defenses have been successful. Um, just in the system, you know, they put the, the DBs on islands, but part of the logic behind it is having such a dominant defensive line, a disruptive defensive line that you force quarterbacks into mistakes that you bottle up the run and you, and you force teams to be one dimensional and uh, just put simply, I mean, you are not going to get the same thing out of anyone who replaces Charlie Partridge is what he was going to bring yeah, either in recruiting uh, in kind of overall game planning in in, keeping a roster hole in leadership and and then of course you know production from the defensive line which you know as we acknowledged is such a critical part to this defense and to this specific scheme um that pat narduzzi likes to run and that uh you know partridge had, had a heavy hand in creating as well um look this this might have been something that Pitt was prepared for to a certain extent um Partridge had been rumored to be connected to an open defensive line job at Florida. Um, some other, uh, you know, vacant, uh, high level, uh, blue blood assistant coaching positions at other schools, but he hadn't left. Um, you know, those rumors just proved to be unfounded. There were some as recent as this winter, um, and believe in December and November that he, he turned down, uh, to stay at Pitt, um, and, and kind of dispelled very quickly. Um, but, you know, there's only so much you can do uh, when you lose a guy like Charlie Partridge, a guy who um, has done so much for this program over the years and, and is just – it really has no equal in college football. I mean, I, for my money, he is the best defensive line coach in college football. Um, I think there are very few – almost no one who has done more with less than Charlie Partridge. Um, there are plenty of, uh, you know, coaches at schools like Georgia or Ohio State or – Alabama who have taken five-star talent and made them play like five stars. Um, Charlie Partridge took two, three stars uh, and made them into four and five star caliber players on the field. He sent them to the NFL. Um, you look at just kind of the number of, of all Americans and all ACC talents that he's coached. Um, he's coached one, two, three, four uh, all Americans uh, during his time uh, at Pitt. He has, coached four draft picks as well, all the same guys. Um, he's also coached six, seven, seven uh, all ACC picks over the past three, se uh, the past four seasons, excuse me. Um, he's coached a defensive player of the year, um, a first round draft pick. Uh, it's, it's really hard to underestimate what, uh, or understate what, what Charlie Partridge did, uh, turning underrated guys like, you know, Patrick Jones and Rashad Weaver, who were two star guys and Kalijah Kansi and under an undersized three star um, Jalen Twyman, another undersized, but a, a four star recruit as well into uh, some of the most productive players in the country at their position. Um, just like I said, very few guys doing more with less and with only, you know, six weeks until the start of spring ball. This is kind of a quick turnaround for Pitt, who's who's now looking to replace the most important uh, coaching staff member that they had. Um, it's a really tough spot, and you can't you can't blame Partridge for leaving for another opportunity. But you got to acknowledge that uh, this is a tough spot for them to be in with such limited time until uh, the start of really the 2024 season, which which starts, you know, in March with spring ball. Um, kind of third week of March is generally, I believe, when they started last year. And to imagine if they're on the same calendar this year, it's going to be pretty difficult to find worthy candidates and to find candidates that can even approach what, what Partridge was capable of doing and what he was doing. Um, the good news is that Partridge, before he left, did a good job reloading this room. Um, so he got, you know, Nate Temple to come back. He retained... Dayon Hayes on the defensive ends. He brought in Nick James, a former four-star recruit from Indiana. He brought in another former four-star recruit from Clemson, David Ojiegbe. Uh, and Nate Matlick uh, from uh, Kansas State is another big-time uh, productive player from a Power 5 school that uh, you'd have to assume just because he's going to a different system, a system that will probably play more to his strengths, that, that he can be a, a great player for them. And there's also a bunch of talent waiting in the wings between – uh, you know, sincere Edwards, um, Isaiah Neal, uh, you know, losing Sam Okunlola, but retaining a guy like a Jimmy Scott um, there and a Nakai Johnson. Um, there's plenty of work 
that Charlie Partridge has done recruiting and retaining guys over the past few years that that should pay dividends as they look to replace him and recover from his loss. Um, you know, kind of as as far as where Pitt goes from here, I mean, I've seen one name thrown out uh, that makes a lot of sense, especially given what kind of a quick turnaround that they have uh, to go through. Malcolm Robinson is an assistant defensive line coach uh, at Pitt right now. He is young. He is under 30 years old. Um, and seems to be a fast riser. He has the Partridge seal of approval. Um, Partridge is, has endorsed this guy, um, obviously because he he worked under him, um, but also I think believe he he's mentioned publicly that he sees something great in Robinson. Um, and I think having someone in house is probably an advantage um, instead of having to bring in someone from outside the program who's got to learn the system, learn the players, learn how everything works um, all in a short amount of time. Um, and that pool of of available coaches might also be pretty thin right now. Um, just given how late we are in the calendar. So I think Robinson's a name to keep your eye on. I don't have any other names for you as of right now. Um, but I think you got to settle with the fact and you got to, you know, be comfortable with the fact that no one that they hire is going to be as good as Partridge in, in really any capacity, um, unless they make some some landmark uh, big splash hire that that I don't see coming. It's it's going to be a step down from what Partridge was was able to give them. You hope that Narduzzi retained enough things. You hope that the scheme plays uh, to the defensive line's advantage uh, to, uh, to enough of an extent that that it mitigates the loss. But uh, the reality is that just between the recruiting, uh, the leadership, and the on-field coaching, things are just not going to be the same at Pitt uh, going into the 2024 season. But uh, luckily there is whew, about, let's call it, seven months until kickoff, a little bit less than that seven months minus a week until kickoff. So the Panthers have at least some time to recover from a loss like this and figure out where they go from here. But with that, uh, I'm going to head out of here. Thank you all for checking out this emergency recording of the inside pit post game uh, practice report. Excuse me. We'll have more reporting over the next few days and, and the next few weeks as to who replaces Charlie Partridge, how they replace him, and uh, what the Panthers do and what they look like heading into spring ball. So make sure you like this video, subscribe to us on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash at Inside the Panthers, and follow all of our reporting at InsideThePanthers.com. Appreciate you all tuning into this video, and I'll see you next time.